welcome to a brand new video on my channel. Today we're back with Too Hot to Handle. This is episode 7, chapter 20, and I can't quite remember where we left off, so let's see if we can remember from this description. It's time for another workshop. Oh yes, because we left it on that we might be being sent home imminently, like right now. Will you be attending or are you about to be sent home? Time to find out. We made some mistakes in this life. Fear pumps through your veins at Lana's announcement. What does she mean by two individuals won't be attending? Where will they be going? As long as no one gets eliminated. What? I didn't even think of that. Matthias and I did break the rules earlier. What if we're the ones going home? Poppy and Julian. Julian's jaw drops and the color seems to leech from Poppy's face. Despite your relationship's early stages, you are still showing signs that you may not be here for the right reasons. Therefore, I'm setting you up for the ultimate test. Oh, I don't reckon that's necessary, Lana. If you're about to say what I think you're about to say, Lana, it's fine, we skip it. Not the sweet, right? You will both spend the night in the private suite. Julian's expression goes from horrified to happy. Wait, I never genuinely thought. We're actually going? Poppy's reaction, however, is much more contained. A private suite? Is that so? Really, Lana? Them? Oh no. This is going to be a disaster. I can feel it in my bones. You might want to get that checked out. Beatrice has to smother her laughter. Does no one have faith in them? Not much. No, no offense. None taken. This time, Poppy can't hide her small smirk. What should I tell Poppy and Julian? Make it count. <laughs> well, you've got a night to yourselves. Make it count. Just wish I was the one making it count with Poppy. No, I don't. I'd much rather have Julian of anyone. Arvi's brows draw together. That's not the advice I would have given. Carmen rolls her eyes so hard that you think she's going to sprain a muscle. Matthias, on the other hand, doesn't seem nearly as worried. Come on, you guys got this. Matthias is right. Just focus on getting to know each other mind, even if you'd rather know their body. Work together, follow your heart, and you'll come out stronger than before. Karma makes a retching sound. Oh, sorry. I just got sick all of a sudden. Hope you get better. Carmen basically growls at Poppy. Wait, so they're skipping the workshop? Correct, Jesse. The workshop will take place at dawn. Due to its early start, Julian and Poppy will not participate. Julian raises a hand to high-five Poppy. We're sleeping in. But Poppy doesn't high-five Julian. Instead, her eyes meet yours. Damn, we can't call dibs on who goes in there. You glance around, wondering if anyone else heard what she said. Wait a minute, is it me she's talking about? Your suspicion is confirmed when she winks at you, but it's subtle and only for you. Would you like anyone else up there with you? Oh, for sure not. But after she says it, she sends another wink your way. Poppy, you minx. Julian and Poppy, please now leave for the suite. With a skip in his step, Julian dashes in front of Poppy. He rolls her eyes but follows him. So that's not good. Get ready for them to empty our pockets. Way ahead of you. We better go and get some sleep. It'll be a long day tomorrow. Everyone grumbles in agreement and heads towards the villa. The next morning, nearly everyone seems to be in various states of exhaustion. Matthias and Jiraiya are the only ones who seem entirely awake. Carmen rubs her eyes and grumbles and Isla seems just as tired. Beatrice and Taz are somewhat awake, but when no one is looking, they stifle yawns. Morning. Phew. Both Giselle and Sean are cut off by yawns. Sun literally just came out. It's so early and we have a workshop. I I do feel like we should sneak away, but I'm gonna say... No, do you know what I want to sneak I want to say I'm gonna sneak away because I want that bar to go off as well making sure no one else is looking your way you try to tiptoe your way back into the villa but then Giselle appears next to you grabbing you by the arm. Hey, where are you going? Uh, to, uh, get some water. You just had a glass before we came here. Oh, true. Disappointed your plan didn't work, you catch up with the group. As you head towards Chloe, a whispered argument catches your attention. I'm telling you, Julian is bad news. I don't want you involved with him. Giselle laughs, but there's no humor behind it. I hope this isn't you trying to tell me who to hang out with, because I can assure you, Sean, she steps closer to him. It will not go well for you. Sean is cowed by the determination in her voice. That's that's not what I was trying to do. His mumbled words aren't convincing, even to your own ears. Good, glad we're on the same page. When they turn towards Chloe, you look away, trying to seem inconspicuous. As you look around, art supplies catch your eye. Chloe cups her hand around her mouth and calls out. Good morning, babes. I think she's from Essex. I'm sure, was it Marta you sent me a video of her? And I think she's from Essex. 
How are you? Hey, Chloe. Ready to take on the day. That's the spirit. There will be time for naps later, all right? Right now. She begins walking around, distributing colorful paint to every easel station. Let's partner up. Jiraiya smiles at you, clearly volunteering to be your workshop partner. Oh, but we want to partner up with... How many people are there? Seven people. Now, I don't have a seven-sided die, so I'm going to roll my eight-sided die. And we're going to see who we get. If we roll eight, it's going to be a roll again. Here we go. Six. Matthias! We keep getting Matthias lately. I would show you, but obviously I could just pick it up and do anything, but that's a six. Matthias approaches the table in front of you. Want to be partners, Jesse? Of course. You examine the various options in front of you as Chloe explains the workshop. Today you'll be getting in touch with your inner artist. From across the sand, Carmen snorts. I'd like to get in touch with somebody else. The group laughs and she tosses her hair. Oh, you're a naughty one, aren't you? All right, the goal is to draw your partner, babes. But there's a catch. You'll be using one word that describes your partner instead of using lines. You'll get in touch with each other on a deeper level, so show your partner that you see them for who they truly are. She smiles brightly. What if we can't draw? That's totally fine. It's not about creating a masterpiece. We'll see about that. Agreed. And now I know who the competitive ones are. Carmen and Taz smirk at the same time as he reaches out to fist bump her. Remember, it's about showing your partner what you think of them and how you perceive them. All right, off you go, lovelies. Matthias examines the various paint colors and grimaces. I've never been much of a creative tap. When he picks up a paintbrush, it looks tiny in his hands. There's a vulnerability in his gaze that you're not used to seeing. Hey, you rest a hand on his bicep. It's not about painting a masterpiece. It's about painting from the heart. And you've got the largest heart out of anyone I know. A smile flickers on his lips. You think so? I know so. Here, let me start. You mix a few paints, making a pretty mauve color. We should focus on the word we're using, not the art. For Matthias, I'll use the word, I think, open. Because Matthias is quite like open to us and he's really sweet. You start painting a big blocky O. I'm going to put open. You've never been afraid to be vulnerable with me. All your cute little blushes, your whispered words. You've always been yourself. Thank you for noticing. Nothing more and nothing less. I like that. You glance up at Matthias, expecting to find a smile on his face. Instead, he looks almost crestfallen. I wish I were open, but all my life I've been the exact opposite. What do you mean? He purses his lips. In high school, I wanted to impress his one specific cheerleader. It didn't work out well. After I made a fool of myself, I asked her out. She told me she wouldn't date me even if I was the last man on earth. That's awful. Immediately, Matthias shakes his head. No, what I did was awful. When I got drafted to the NFL, she came back around and apologized for what happened, then claimed she always had a crush on me. Mmm, no way. Well, I thought so too. I was bitter. I wasn't sure if she was genuinely remorseful or not. But I used that against her. We dated for a few months, but I could never get over it. I was never sure if she liked me or not, but it was no excuse. Then, when she told me she loved me, I said, I wouldn't love you even if you were the last woman on earth. His cheeks burn with shame and he can't even meet your eyes. Still think I'm open now? Or do you see me for who I am? He smiles brittily. Maybe you should get a new canvas and write asshole all over it. Wow, that's a wild story. You were an asshole. You can't deny how bad the story seems. Honestly, you're a complete asshole. She was a teenager in high school and you were an adult when you dated. Even if her feelings weren't genuine, there's a chance they might have been. Matthias looks completely dejected. I know, I'm ashamed. I hope you're not like that now. I'm not, or at least I'm hoping I'm not. It took a lot of therapy for me to forgive myself and her. I reached out to her a few months ago and apologized, but I felt like her answer was too polite. She either got over it or she loathes me entirely. I couldn't be sure. He looks down at the painting you've completed. I want to be open for you. I think you can be. Matai seems relieved that you're not angry with him. He picks up his own paintbrush and dips it into a soft spring green. You hold your breath, waiting to see what word he's chosen for you. In a sweep of cursive, he writes, sharp. You pretend to claw at him like a cat. Are you saying I'm aggressive? He laughs, lightening the mood of the workshop. Not quite. I mean, you're intelligent. You have this ability to interpret everyone and their needs. You're astute and brilliant and truthfully leave me speechless. He gestures to the canvas. But I can only put one word down so sharp seems to summarize it best. I'll tell Matthias, you should feel my nails. You smirk. If you think I'm sharp now, you should feel my nails scrape down your back. Matthias' hand jerks up in surprise, messing up the final sharp on the canvas. You really like to tease me, don't you? You bat your eyelashes innocently. Did I do something wrong? 
You both take a step away from your canvases to examine the paintings. They're not good, but they're a lot better than what you were expecting. And even better, you learned a little bit more about Matthias. The paintings may not be worth much, but the time spent with Matthias is priceless. All right, everyone. It seems like you're all done. Artists or not, I'm really, really proud of you all. You lift your art pieces into the air and cheer. And mine's the best. Come again. Still not a competition. Anyway, loves, I hope you learned something about one another today. But just as importantly, I hope you see yourselves in a different light too. This was such an amazing experience, Chloe. I had a great time flexing my awful art skills, honest. Chloe places a hand over her heart and uses the other one to pet Bear when he nudges his nose against it. And he loves it. Look at little Bear. You've all been brilliant, babes, including you, Bear. See you next time. You all wave and yell your excited goodbyes to Chloe as you head into the villa. After the workshop, everyone heads to the dining room for some much-deserved breakfast. There's an entire spread waiting for you and celebratory mocktails are perched on the sideboard. Ah, sustenance. Who knew creating art would take so much energy? From across the room, Taz holds up a paint-stained hand. I did. The group laughs and settles in to eat. Matthias sits to your right and Giselle takes a seat to your left. I got a glance at your canvas at the end of the workshop, Jesse. It looks great. I love how many colours you used to write open. Giselle is complimenting my art. I'll tell her... Yours look great too. Hey, thanks. Yours look great too. Determined was a great choice to describe Sean. Giselle perks up. Thank you. He leans in to whisper. I considered the grumpy, but it didn't seem in spirit of the retreat. Taz, you still got a little paint. Matthias gestures to Taz's cheek. Thanks. When Taz wipes it, he smears blue all across his skin. Carmen smirks and laughs throatily. You got it all. When Taz looks at his reflection through a spoon, he snorts. Remind me never to ask you for assistance, Carmen. Jirai nudges Carmen. Looks like no one will be writing helpful on your canvas anytime soon. I prefer words like vivacious or desirable. As interesting as today was, I think it's pretty clear we still have a long way to go. I saw some people getting a little too close for comfort. Really? It's all I saw was either trying not to fall asleep. It was an early morning, okay? My brain wasn't awake yet, it's not my fault. Lana lights up, interrupting the group's conversation. Hello everyone. I hope you've learned a lot during your workshop. Yes ma'am, I learned all of it. There's, uh, that's not... Never mind. Julian and Poppy are waiting for you in the cabana, and all of you have a big decision to make. Jaws drop and gasp echo around the room. Oh boy, I was afraid of this. This is, uh, this is one of those trust tests. I just know it. How bad can it be? Potentially, very. Your assumptions are correct. If you believe Julian and Poppy broke the rules, you may forfeit $5,000. This will cover any and all rule breaks that occurred in the suite. Or you are confident that Julian and Poppy did not break the rules, you can choose to forfeit nothing and trust them. Immediately, a debate breaks out. What if this is another Jiraiyu and Jesse situation? The rule breaks could be slash and half. That's a good point. If they only kiss once, we'd be spending an extra three and a half grand. Yeah, but let's not forget that Poppy and Julian recently lost us 10 grand. If they break a rule, it'll probably be a big one. Maybe they got it out of their systems? But what if half-off rules don't apply anymore? We could stand to lose a lot of money. I'll just go out and say it. I don't trust them. Agreed. Look, y'all, they've got as much to lose as we do. We should have a little faith. I like that thought. Me too, but it's not very realistic. This is a tough decision, but one we have to make. How do people before us do this? Well, they voted. I think that's exactly what we should do. The time has come for you to make your decision. Do I trust Poppy and Julian, or do I want to forfeit $5,000? We should trust them. I say we trust them. After yesterday, they should know better than to try and break our trust. I don't agree. Asking Julian not to break the rules is like asking the sun to never set. It's gonna happen. And this is nothing to do with your bias against Julian. Sean Frank. I'm hetero, Jesse, not bi. Um, what? You just told me I have a bi ass? Th that's not what that word means. I agree with Jesse. Giselle smiles in your direction. We should trust them. They know what's at stake. Giselle's vehemence manages to convince the group. Aside from Sean and a few other worried glances, the majority agrees. All right, Lana. We're going to trust Poppy and Julian. I have noted your decision. Please join Poppy and Julian in the cabana. Here we go. When you reach the cabana, you automatically search Julian's expression for any hint of what just happened. He's as still as a statue, giving away nothing. Poppy, on the other hand, has her usual smirk firmly in place. So, want to spill the beans before Lana? I think we should let the lady speak. Because it's polite or because you're a coward? Giselle elbow Sean. Julian and Poppy. Last night, I gave you a test to see if you could adhere to my rules while alone in the suite, surrounded by sex toys, lubricants, and a freestanding bath. 
Yes, you did. But that was not the whole picture. Poppy smirk falls away. I also gave your fellow guests a test of trust in you. They could either put their faith in you, or they could forfeit $5,000 to cover any and all potential rule breaks in the suite. I can now reveal they chose to trust you. Poppy and Julian glance at each other. Poppy has a poker face and Julian looks downright terrified. Everyone leans in, desperate to hear if your decision was right or wrong. I must tell the group that Poppy and Julian broke several rules last night. I have a feeling, and tell me if I'm wrong, would it have mattered whatever we chose? Like, if I'd have chose to trust them, would they have broken the rules? And if I'd have chose to not trust them, would they have not broken the rules? I don't know. There's a part of me that feels like whatever that decision would have been, I would have got it wrong. Immediately, protests go up around the group. Oh, no. Come on, seriously. Y'all are not team players. Like the last time at the cabana, Carmen rolls her eyes. I tried to tell you all. They couldn't keep it in their pants, even if they were surrounded by poisonous snakes. Hey. Snakes are venomous, not poisonous. Who cares? I bet herpetologists do. We're missing the point. Three rule breaks, everyone. Julian finally stops hiding behind his palms. I'm sorry, you guys. We couldn't resist. We had a little kiss and then another, followed by full-blown sex. Poppy and Julian, your several rule breaks have cost the group $26,000. That's a lot of money. Oh, Oh, and we dipped below 100,000. Isla gasps so loudly that Bear's ears prick up. <gasps> this has to be a joke. Tell us you're joking. Julian's silence says it all. $26,000. That is actually a joke. I was right not to trust you. Ugh. Immediately, guilt gnaws at you. I'm so sorry, guys. I thought for sure they wouldn't break any rules. It was a group decision, Jesse. We're as responsible as you are. Agreed. I'm not taking any responsibility for what you decided together. Ditto. Keep your guilt party to yourselves. Matthias rubs his eyes. I wanted to trust you so badly, Julian. To his credit, Julian seems chagrined. I really am sorry. Oh, that's just not true. I'm not. Poppy smells smugly and leans back in her seat. Let's just say I'm very satisfied with how things worked out last night. Everyone groans at the innuendo. At the time, Poppy. That is not all. Hope the other news is better. Can't take it anymore. I have singled out two individuals with relationships that have potential and will send them on a date with someone of their choosing. I can take that. It is my hope that your time on a private jet will further develop these growing bonds. A private jet? Whoa, that's never happened before. Jirayu seems suspicious. What model? The first person is Giselle. Giselle squeals and nearly leaps into Sean's arms. Who will you be taking with you? Sean, of course. She snuggles deeper into his arms and Sean looks smug. The second person who will be going on the date is Jesse. Your jaw drops. Me? Jesse, please select someone to join you on the date. I get to pick? Oh, this is going to be interesting. And not now. We have to do it later. Okay, so we lost $26,000. And by we, I mean not we. We teased Poppy and Julian to make it count. Oh, so maybe it was my fault. I forgot we did that. Whoops. But like 30% of people, 38% of people told Poppy and Julian to behave themselves. That could have potentially influenced the decision as well. We also said Matthias was open, like 32% of people, but 39% called him strong and 29 called him graceful. We also complimented Giselle's art, like 58% of people. 27 thanked Giselle for her compliment and 15% of people scoffed at Giselle's drawing. I feel like Giselle is really strongly going down in your estimations. We also believed we should trust Julian and Poppy, like 37% of people. But 63% of people voted to forfeit the money. I think we maybe should have done that. Please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you think we should be singling in on one person at the moment? Do you think we should always go for Matthias or always go for Jirayu or always go for someone else? Please let me know down below. And thank you so much to our wonderful channel members whom without you, these videos would not be possible. And I am so, so grateful that you are members of the channel. You're a massive reason I keep making these videos. So thank you so, so much. It really does mean a lot. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you haven't already, already give this video a like subscribe to see more and turn on your notifications so you know every single time i upload a video thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next one goodbye